This is Tibet, the roof of the world. A country steeped in tradition and a people deeply influenced by Buddhism. A strong sense of compassion has formed the basis of their non-violent struggle for freedom. A freedom struggle that began when the People's Republic of China carried out their peaceful liberation of Tibet. For the Tibetans, it has been anything but. 1950, a Chinese army entered to Tibet. The Chinese did not come to Tibet by mistake. And in my view, they will never willingly and voluntarily walk away from Tibet. They want more land, they want more mineral resources, they want more water. The biggest rivers in Asia, it comes from the Tibetan plateau. The Tibet issue also is there, very much related with environment issue. So environment issue, the whole world should take serious concern. In the craze for oil today will be the craze for fresh water, fresh drinking water tomorrow. Tibet is 2.5 million square kilometers. You know, if Tibet were free, India and China would be a thousand kilometers apart. What would that mean for world peace? China has clearly shown that they are not interested in talking Tibet and for them, Tibet is a closed chapter. We all should join together to prayer for change of mind and hearts of the present leadership and present rulers. That is the only way to uh, get an emancipation for all the suffering people. And we are not against the ordinary Chinese people. They have also suffered a great deal under this military colonial regime. <laughs> We tried to demonstrate it on the, during the Chinese New Year. And at that time, a lot of soldiers and Chinese policemen around the area, in Tibet, in the central area. Our struggle through non-violent way. Now this kind of struggle should succeed. Freedom, democracy, human right, and also non-violence. If these are necessary, then uh, people should support the Tibet cause. While I am prepared to die in the struggle for freedom, I am not prepared to waste a single day of my life to help make Tibet a part of China.